Okay, we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to look at group trends and period trends dealing with these five characteristics. And the first one is that we're going to look at, it's called atomic radii. Okay, and the definition of that, again, who was it that had it? What was it, Nathan? Um, it is the distance between the nuclei of the identical atoms. Is it like half the distance? Yeah, that's not between the nuclei of two identical atoms. So we have two identical atoms here. We can draw models like this. There's the nuclei. And so this distance here, okay, would be one half of that distance is what we're going to use. It's the size of the atom. So what would that be called? What's another way to look at that? Oh, I know it. Um, What's the uh, distance diameter. between the center and the outside of the circle? What's that called? Radius. 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 Okay? So that's radius. All right? So we're going to look at some trends. All right? Um, so basically the size of the atom. Yes? Could I? tell you Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Listen. Well, I'm going to go group first. Now, group, if you remember... Group is going, going down. So groups are going down. If you guys are following along, you guys can actually see the groups really well on page 151. We will not use the D block to do any trends. The D block, if you remember, are when electrons are filling inner shell electrons. They fill the S and they go back to the D. Then they'll fill the S, which is outer shell, and then they'll go to the D. So the atom size depends upon the outer shell. If you look at the Ds, guys, look at the, the Ds real quick. They don't change in size a whole lot, do they? Look at the Ds and their circles and their sizes. They don't change a whole lot. Why don't they change a whole lot? Because they have that S on the outside and they're filling the inner shell Ds. So that outer shell is going to change a little bit, but not a lot. So we have a group trend going down the group. What's the trend? Um, the atomic radii um, increases right. when you go down the group. Right, so we're going to say increases. Any questions? Increases in size as you go down a group. They get bigger. Okay, what's the main reason for that? Why does it get bigger? Yeah, Nathan? Because there are more shells. Yep, you increase the number of shells each time you go down a group. Okay, Add a, adding additional sh shells. You're adding additional shells. So they get larger. Any questions with that? Now, lots of times I'll get students that will be able to tell me the trend. And for example, if we're looking at the periodic table, we have sodium versus cesium. Cesium's down below it. So students can say, I'll say, which, which atom is larger, cesium or potassium? And you'll say, it's easy. And then you'd have to give a reason. 
and some students forget the reason and they don't but some of the reasons later on are a little bit more difficult so make sure you know how to do the reasoning okay all right the uh, we're gonna put this on the next page so period trend Now, period, you're going across. We are going to exclude the Ds. We do not look at Ds. We go Ss to Ps. We don't look at this middle group because the Ds are filling in inner shells. Okay? So what's the period trend? Yeah. Um, uh, the atoms are smaller. They get yep. smaller. Okay, so the trend is atomic radii get smaller. Now again, we'll go back to, to atomic radii size when we start talking about uh, atoms wanting to gain electrons or lose electrons, and that's all very important based upon that information. Okay? So the reason, now there's a couple reasons that we're going to take a look at here, one main reason. Okay, so the reason is uh, because of an increasing positive charge of the nucleus on uh, electrons filling the same energy level. We're going to call that a nuclear effect. Okay, I'm going to put down nuclear effect and we'll go ahead and explain it. Okay. So we're not including the D group? We don't. It, 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 a lot of times when we talk about bonding, ionic or covalent, the D group won't come in a lot of the time. Okay? Because it's an inner shell. Because it's an inner shell and only outer shell electrons are involved in bonding, either covalent or ionic. Wait. And that's why. But if there's more electrons on it, wouldn't it have to be bigger? Yeah. The, the thought would be... Right, and I'll explain nuclear effect and how that works. So, right, the, the idea is that if you add more and more electrons, girls, more and more electrons to a, to a shell, that those electrons will want to repel. Right? Yeah. Because they're like charges. Like charges repel. Okay? So, if they repel, then what keeps them from repelling and actually do the opposite, pull in closer and closer to the nucleus, because that's what's going on as you're going across that, those uh, periods, okay? It's called a nuclear effect, and just what Nathan said, it's increasing the uh, positive charge in the nucleus So increasing the positive charge in the nucleus pulls electrons in a shell closer to the nucleus. Okay, any questions with that? So that's what the nuclear effect is, yes? Mm -hmm. And then when we, whoever did ionic radii, we'll talk about that. Yeah, if it loses an electron, now we've got more protons and electrons and they'll be pulled closer and closer together. Odie, oh, don't talk to her in front of me, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Any questions that? Real simple, real basic. Yeah, you know, like Carter said, why wouldn't it get bigger as you go across? Those electrons are getting together. They repel one another, but the nuclear effect is greater than that repulsion between those electrons. So it will be closer, pulled closer and closer to the 
to the nucleus. And so the trend is to get smaller to go across. Okay? We need to move on to ionization energy. And real quick, they said what that, who was that? Did you guys have, okay? And it's the energy needed, the energy required. to take an electron away from a neutral atom. Okay, so if we take an electron away from a neutral atom, what charge does it become? Positive. What's the positive charge uh, ion called? Anybody know? The cation. Oh, cation or cation and cation or cation. Right. And she did ionic radii, so they went through cation and anion, right? Yeah. Yep. So we'll get to that here, here a little bit later when we do that tomorrow. So atom becomes positive charge. All right? And that would be... That electron is called an IE1 electron, and that's because it's the first electron taken out. There's also an IE2 electron, that would be the second electron, the energy required to take it out. There's an IE3, third electron, fourth electron. As you take more and more electrons out, how does that energy change? We, we, we will get to that a little bit later, but I just want you to put IE1 because that's, that's the first ionization energy. Okay? So, let's look at the group trend. Bubba, what do you guys have as a trend? Um, it decreases down the group. Yep. So, ionization energy decreases down the group. And I'm just going to put decreases because that's headings above. You can figure that out. Reason. There's two reasons, okay? And one has to go back to the size of the atom. What do we know about those electrons as we go down a group? What do we know about those electrons that are farther from the nucleus? They like to get lost. They have higher energy. Or higher energy. They have high, higher energy, right. But to get them away from the atom, away from the nucleus, the greater the distance between those, the nucleus and those electrons, what, what kind of uh, energy would it be required to remove it? It's less. undoubtedly less. And the reason why is because the electrons are farther away from the nucleus. Okay? So we can put that down. Oh, and that positive force doesn't have to align. Right, right. Okay, that's one reason, and there's another reason that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to do that on, I can do that here, it's called shielding effect. And the shielding effect is when inner electrons distribute the pull of the nucleus electrons. So it's kind of like the analogy would be in football, 
you've got two or three guys running interference. They're coming, they're pulling. You've got a lot of guys leading a block. And then those guys coming in, it's harder for them to make the tackle because of all those individuals coming out and shielding the guy behind them. So they're acting like a shield, and they're not allowing the, the, the defense in which to, to be able to make contact with that runner. So and it, I'll go ahead and show you a third slide to kind of show you the effect, what we mean. So we have these first two electrons here. Uh, is there any shielding going on on those two? Is there any electrons between these two electrons and the nucleus? No. no. So then we go out here and we have eight in this area. Are these being shielded by electrons? Yes. From, they, there's a little bit of a shield, but not much. So then we come out here and then we have our eight to begin with. And then we fill the fourth shell with S's, and we get our two. Is there more electrons shielding the nucleus? Yes. Yeah. And as you get more and more of these with the D's, and then start filling up out here, you can see why there's more interference. Okay, more of a shielding effect that takes place. Okay, the last one. So we went period trend, group trend and period trend. So the last one we're going to look at is called electron affinity, right? We didn't do period. We didn't do period trend? <coughs> oh, okay. Is the shielding effect also not for the period trend? Not for the period trend, it won't be. Because you're adding electrons to the same shell. So there's no electrons that are filling inner shells. So the period trend is to do what going across? What's that? Um, yes, it increases. Okay, and the reason there's no shielding effect on this one, and if it had a shielding effect, it would be just like the last one. It would actually cause a decrease going across the period. So there's no shielding effect because the electrons are being added to the same region. Okay? So the reason it gets uh, harder to take out an electron is that the atoms are smaller in size and the electrons closer to the nucleus. And if it's closer to the nucleus, we know that the force of attraction is going to be greater, right? Because opposites, when they get closer together, there's greater pull. So it's harder to take out that electron as you go across. Okay? The last one, hopefully we can get all of it down. If we don't, we'll just add to it tomorrow. And the, the uh, last one is called electron affinity, and this is opposite of ionization energy. So who had electron affinity? Okay, so uh, we're going to have you give the definition and we'll write it down. Uh, energy change that occurs when an electron is acquired by a neutral atom. Right. So it's the energy, energy change observed when a neutral atom acquires an electron. Okay? 
So it's the opposite of ionization energy. I need you to take a look at these uh, negative values because negative values means that there's a greater amount of energy change associated with an atom when it gains an electron. So um, turn over to page 157 real quick. There are three groups that are zeros. What groups are zeros? Two. Groups 2, 7, and 12. Wait. No, well, there is 1 and 7, but down yeah. below it's not. Yeah. So, Noah? 12 and 18. Um, 2, 12, and 18. Okay. And, and we'll get to the, the reasons is because they have full subshells. And I'm not going to show that. I have time to do that. I did in the other class. But full subshells means that the S's are all full. S2, they're all full. And then if we go to 12, which is zinc, D10, they're all full. If we go to group 18, P6, they're all full. They're all full. So they don't want an electron because it's like getting on a bus and all the seats are full. Where am I going to go? I have nowhere to go on a van. Sorry, go to the other van. We're full. We got everybody, we got 10 people and a driver. Go to the other van, we're full. So they're not going to allow any electrons in if all the subshells are full, okay? We're almost out of time, but this last one, we're going to give the group trend and reason. The group trend is, as you go down a group, then the trend is to give off less energy. So, uh, it is to decrease down a group. We decrease down a group. Okay? And the reason for that trend is that um, when you add electrons to that outer shell, they're farther from the nucleus. So, less attraction for electrons in outer shell of bigger atoms. atom is larger. Okay, that's all we have time. We'll pick up the period trend tomorrow. So, okay. I'm going to be going tomorrow. All this will be on the website, though. Yeah, if you go to chemistry, the Actress Chemistry website, uh, Mrs. Hamilton is going to help me uh, upload it to that site, and then you can go Hopefully, if it works, which I'm not saying it will, because it's the first time that you can do that. Okay? okay?